Aloha, this is PJ with your weekly sports update. The Latte Championship took place last week with local girl Michelle Wee coming in as the defending champion. After firing a 69 on Wednesday and a 70 on Thursday, we went into the final two rounds at five under par. But the trade wins made for tough conditions as the Punahou grad shot two over par over the last two days to finish in a tie for 11th at three under par. Once again, the strength of the Korean contingent was on display with Se Young Kim, N.B. Park, the world's number two ranked golfer, and Chela Choi battling the wind and the course to lead to a dramatic finish. After hitting in the water on the last hole in regulation, Se Young Kim chipped in from off the green to force a playoff with the world's second ranked golfer in N.B. Park. And if that wasn't enough, on the first playoff hole, Kim jarred a seven iron from 156 yards to hole out and take the title to put a quick end to all the drama and claim the Latte Championship. UH Men's Baseball got some good home cooking over the weekend, taking two out of three games from Cal State University of North Northridge with two very strong pitching performances. On Friday night, the Bulls handed the ball to LJ Brewster, who didn't disappoint as Brewster tossed seven innings of three-hit ball while striking out five and issuing only one base on ball. Lefty Quentin Torres Costa came in to pitch the last two innings to strike out three of the six batter he faced and earned his first conference save as the Warriors held on to win a close one to nothing ball game. The second game of the series saw the Bulls get off to an early 2-0 lead against arguably Northridge's best pitcher in Jerry Keel as Steven Ventimiglia and Alan Baldwin scored on RBI singles by Alex Sawilson and Eric Ramirez after a single and a bunt single of their own to set the table. Once again, UH got steady pitching, this time in the arm of Tyler Brashears, as the junior right-hander dealt eight strong innings, yielding nine hits and one run to go along with six strikeouts, and Brashears did not walk a batter as the Bulls took game two, three to one, with lefty Quentin Torrance Costa once again picking up the save in back-to-back -back games, striking out two batters in the last frame to seal the victory for the Warriors. The Rainbow's Warriors couldn't complete the sweep, dropping the last game of the series Sunday afternoon, losing 7-3 as local boy Jared Awakawa took the loss in his poorest outing of the season thus far. Awakawa gave up a season-high four runs on five Matador hits and going five and one-third and striking out four batters. UH dropped to 5-8 and eight in the Big West Conference and faced number nine ranked UC Santa Barbara this, later this week at Les Murakami Stadium. The previously number one ranked men's volleyball team fell from the top of the polls with two tough losses to BYU and Provo last week. The first game saw an aggressive Cougar team take it to the Bulls and win in four sets as local boy Capone Fay had a match high and career high with 19 kills. Faye also had two service aces and five digs, but it wasn't enough. In the second match, the Rainbow Warriors put up a better fight and almost pulled out their first victory over BYU on the Cougars' home court since 2003. UH was outblocked in that first game by the Cougars 14 and a half to five and a half. The second game saw senior Brooks Sador reach 20 plus kills for the fourth time this season with 21 kills and 12 digs, posting a double-double. While sophomore setters Jennings Fran Franciscovic had 52 assists in a valiant effort. All-American middle Taylor Avril had 11 kills, and Siki the Hammer Zarkovic had 10 kills to pace the Warriors. UH will be back in action on April 25th to host Long Beach State in a quarterfinal match at the Stan Sheriff Center. Aloha, and thank you for joining me, your host, PJ, on Hawaii Weekly Sports Update. See you next week.